Engineering is like a brain teaser every day. Creating more efficient ways to do things. I love most thinking about how people are going to use the space. I like dreaming about it. Having ideas out of my brain and then actually seeing it built. It's the unknown that really keeps me excited for my job and keeps things interesting. It's a lot of what you learn in science and engineering classes is how the world works and then how to apply those skills to solving problems. Here at the Port of Portland, we have so many interesting challenges we're solving every day. We're a part of solving regional transportation issues. It's a really fun place to work with diverse teams on interesting problems, and we bring together people from all different backgrounds. Planning, from architecture, from engineering, design, construction, technology, all sorts of different backgrounds get to work together to solve these really interesting challenges. I did not plan to go into architecture, did not have the courage or the confidence or what I thought to be the discipline to do so. That started first with going into the military, which I was very passionate about. I became a civil engineer within the military. Architecture really gave me the ability to um, have my hand in all things, including master planning and urban planning. My dad used to take me walking through houses that were in construction, and I really liked just seeing the open framed studs and basically visualizing, this is the dining room, this is the living room, this is the bathroom. And from that point forward, I started doing drafting classes in junior high. I took shop classes to figure out how to build things. I was very interested in the mathematics side of engineering, so I took the classes that were structural. It was my sophomore, junior year that I decided that engineering was the best path to go. A lot of people mistake it for, you know, you needing to be some big brain power to be a success in engineering, but it really just takes someone that can communicate well to be really successful in this job. In high school, I wasn't a perfect student. I struggled with math and sciences. I took a physics course that really got me interested in engineering, and from there, I decided to dedicate myself and actually stick with it. And I started my first drafting class when I was in ninth grade. So after my first year of engineering school, I was uh, able to find an internship for the port. I applied for it and was able to get the job. I interned for a few years while I went through school. I grew up on a farm. And so we were always outside building fences and repairing tractors. Got a job with the Port of Portland in the engineering department as a secretary. That gave me the opportunity to be exposed to other types of jobs and explore opportunities. Jobs that I didn't know existed. I love that at the end of the day, something concrete and visible. I built something. I helped build a facility that we're now using. I helped install a loading bridge that people are now using to get onto an airplane. Engineering is all about solving problems, and sometimes they're big problems like climate change and how we can have solutions for that, and then sometimes they're much more individual problems like what are we going to do to fix this road right here. I had met some engineers. I saw the way that they got to work on solving big problems, whether it was flooding or water quality, air quality, and I was really attracted by that, the idea of solving big problems that could help make society better and help make the world a better place. Engineers, architects, contractors talking about a problem or many problems and trying to coordinate how those things are going to manifest by a timeline, budget, to make sure that project can actually kick off. Specific details that aren't in ex existence yet, so you really have to and get to utilize the imagination that you were born with and see it in 3D. There's electrical engineering, there's civil engineering, mechanical engineering, any of the above. Any one project might have a wide variety of those disciplines. So if you get all the right people in the room and work together, then you can come up with a solution to nearly any problem. So if you focus on what you're good at, and each one of you focuses on what you're good at, when you come together as a team, you're gonna score some major points and win. I could not get a project done if I did not have all the other discipline of professionals to help me. The more people with different ideas that you can bring into a team, the more successful you're going to be at, at being creative and thinking of new ways to do things. We need diverse creative thinkers with lots of different backgrounds and from different cultures to come to those problems and help us solve them together. 
I think engineering and all different science, technology, math fields, they all require a mix of skills. So you need to be able to communicate well about your ideas and work well with others on teamwork. You want to have an interest and a passion for problem solving and understanding how the world works. Don't let math stand in your way if you're not particularly good at it or you feel you're not or you have a math block, and I'm speaking personally to myself there, I always thought I had a math block and even I'm working that out right now at 42. The math gets easier, uh, it's not all miserable homework and the reward greatly outweighs the, the work you have to put in. Find someone to job shadow um, or find a summer job for working for a contractor and learn about which kind of engineers come out to the site um, and see what kind of parts of construction you like. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it or that you're not strong enough or smart enough or tough enough. Do it. Mm -hmm.